I mean, like the most iconic line. So this is a reality show trickling into my real life. Yes. Yeah. Isn't this our real life? I was very confused by that because I'm like, duh. Like, you know, <laughs> here we are, Shannon. I mean, hello. <laughs> like, is this your first day here, girl? The whole point is you show your authentic life here on this show. It's my, my real life. life. It's definitely my real life. So if it's affecting, I, it, I mean, I'm sure Shannon regrets saying that. I mean, we all say things in the moment that we regret. Brought me you're not, I did not bring you not into gonna this. shut up. Oh, you just you're a wackadoodle. You Whatever. went a wackadoodle Fine. all night. Go. This is embarrassing. I think she was just probably so shaken up by Alexis, by the relationship with John, by John consistently coming up, by the lawsuit that he filed while we were filming, by you know, this threat of releasing videos that are gonna humiliate her, of being in London and everyone attacking her. There was the show and everything that we were doing in the moment, and then there was this legal battle that's still going to be continuing when these cameras go down. I think that what Shannon actually meant by that was like, yeah, maybe I'm sharing this and this is in the moment, but then after this comes out, it doesn't stop. Yes, the show is real life, but you're seeing snippets. The audience is seeing snippets, like I'm, going to bed at night, the show will stop airing. I still got a lawsuit. I still am dealing with the consequences of my poor decision in drinking and driving. You know, Alexis Bellino is still posting about her future husband and their relationship. It doesn't stop. I just think that at that time it was a lot for Shannon. You know, I think part of the frustration was it affects all of our lives. You know, it affects all of our lives, a lot of positive, and then, you know, when the ugly stuff happens. So when Shannon said that, it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, obviously. I think we all saw Shannon throughout the season have moments of really tough times. And we were all kind of like, you know, this is really heavy on you, and we want you to like mentally heal. But she got through it. She's stronger than I thought she would be and she got through it. I think that she just said something which sounds ridiculous because the whole point of the show is that we're sharing our real lives and this is your real life. There isn't a separation between the two. Well, I think that there's some people that are on the show that, you know, it's fun. You go have lunches, dinners, laugh, yell at a few people, and you go home and you can turn it off. You're not going in as deep. She's going around telling people, oh, Tamara doesn't have a storyline. I'm like, no, I don't have a storyline. I have a life. <laughs> what is that miss? This is deep. It's a deep year. Year 10 is deep for it me. It doesn't turn off. No, it doesn't turn off. We had the most hideous flights to London ever. Couldn't fly direct, so we had to fly from LA to New York and then New York to London. It was the worst weather. I've never been in so much turbulence. We got diverted to Rochester. It was an extra flight. We got diverted. We had to sit on the tarmac because the airport was closed. It was so much turbulence. It was so bad. Emily was crying the whole time. We were all writing goodbye notes to our family. You get off the plane. We have two minutes to change. And now we're going to go on the Thames on a bumper boat ride. No, thank you. I was a total little bitch about it. I hated every second of it. <laughs> I love the boat ride. No, 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 no. No. Okay, I don't like this. But I've had to sit through a lot of fancy dinners, so enjoy the boat ride. No, no. I'm scared of drowning, and so when I'm on, like boats, sort of scare me. I'm always thinking, what if it flips? Like, am I going to be stuck under the boat? How do you swim out from under the boat? And like, they put life jackets on us, but there's no seatbelt. It was just like, I don't find this fun at all. I, no. I tried looking for my birth mother about 10, 11 years ago, but I was also getting divorced. So I didn't really want two life, big life things happening at the same time. So I put it off and I kind of compartmentalized it for a little bit. And I wanted to turn 40 and enter into my 40s, checking that off my bucket list. They located my biological mother in the same town where I was born, a small farming town. So she knows. She knows I was looking for that her. you were looking for her, wow. My husband and I right now are still planning our trip. My father-in-law passed away, so we kind of had to put it off for a little bit. But I would like to go back and even just to see where I'm from would be pretty magical for me. The city that I was born in is like southwest of Seoul. You're gonna find your birth mother? I hope so.
I talk a little bit about my adoption experience with the women at a dinner in London. I explain to people that I feel like my life is a beautiful puzzle and I just have a bottom right piece missing. And I just want to put that puzzle piece and then I will feel whole. And you know, I haven't really gotten close with everybody, but I think in that moment, every single woman, even Heather with the odds we're at, were really kind and really receptive and really wanted to hear what happens next. And I appreciated that. I'm excited for you. Thanks. It's a great. I can't wait to hear about it. Wow, yeah. Hopefully what it's do you, good news. What do you bring Are you, you, you going to bring her something? Have you thought about that? I don't know. Like, uh, uh, traditionally, I don't know. What? What? I was just saying, this is the most conversation I've seen you two have. I so I was just, I was encouraging it. Yeah. You know, sometimes Heather and I are great. She has a very soft, kind side to her. We were on the plane to London and we were all terrified because there's crazy turbulence and she reached up to hold my hand. And, you know, with that, she was like, Katie, that is so wonderful. Like, let me know how that happens. And, you know, we do have really good moments. I do think we can be friends at some point. We just maybe have to get past some things. We did see you receive some worrying news during your mammogram appointment. How are you doing today? So the upsetting news is that my risk factor shot up hugely. Your estimated risk is coming out at like 39%, which is pretty high. When your risk is, is that high, we're usually like very, you know, want to be like extra. What is extra a normal thorough. risk factor for my age group? A, a normal number? Yeah. Um, it's like 12%. Which is terrifying. And so then the question is, do you go have these MRIs and they do them with contrast and they give you this dye which has gadolinium in it, which has other side effects. And I've had a number of MRIs for that issue and also for other things where my gadolinium levels are high now. And li literally the radiologist said to me, listen, if we find it, we'll catch it early. And, and it's like, no, you don't wanna hear that. You don't wanna hear anything like that. And I know the radiologist. I go there every year. Terry's on staff at that hospital. So usually she comes out and she's like, hey, it's great. See you next year or whatever. This was, this was a shift. And scary since two family members just had it. As I sit currently, I'm a healthy person, but it's concerning to figure out what kind of tests I should be doing to make sure I stay that way. And I think I was so shocked by that news. And I'm at 39. Yeah, and you're at 39. I'm totally freaked out. It's terrifying. And now I have to figure out what I do with this information. But I just, I was, you know, it was sad to me that the girls didn't just ask. We were sitting in the room and they literally, the three of them went, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? And no one turned to me. I'm very Sorry. happy that you're yeah, okay. No. Great, yeah, so what did they say to do about day. it? Nothing, yeah, good, you're okay. I didn't even have to do an ultrasound this time, although I do have some dense breasts, still at 60. They're still dense. And I just thought, that is so shitty. Like, why wouldn't anyone just ask? But then when it got brought up, when Tamara asked me about it when we were in London. I didn't hear about yours. Oh. Well, no one actually ever asked me. <laughs> I'm asking you. Wait, we heard you cheering, so we thought you guys were No, good. we were cheering for Gina. My God, they just turned on me. You should have told us. It's your fault. I'm like, okay. At some point, it would be nice if, if I said something and one of the girls just went, wow, that, yeah, I should have asked. That was I don't understand why Heather is waiting this long to bring this up. I think that Heather doesn't see the hypocrisy. What's upsetting to me is, why didn't you tell me in December? Yeah, no, I know, I f***ed up. I f***ed up. I f***ed up and I'm sorry. Like, if this was something that bothered her, why didn't she just call me after the mammogram? It's overlooked in the moment, but when someone points it out to you, just say something. 